Good morning. Today we're going to go for a test drive in a D110 named Bruno by Helderberg. This D110 has been lifted approximately three inches. We're riding on 35 inch tires, but I'll go over everything. I'll go over the exterior, but I'll start with the interior and the drive. But before I get started, let me just tell you, it was cold last night. It was really cold. It was in the negative digits. I think it got to around negative seven or so and wind was around 15 to 20 miles an hour and Bruno sat outside and this morning I started it and it started right up. There's no block heater. The only concern you have when you're driving a diesel, at least for a Land Rover Defender, is making sure that those glow plugs light up and if you have the proper diesel fuel. So this one has summer diesel fuel so there's a chance that that fuel will gel and uh, could actually freeze up in the fuel lines but park it in the sun and it will thaw. So let's get started. Let's go for a drive and I'm just going to let you hear it at first and then I'll get into the details. Alright, D110 Bruno, this one has been lifted as I said earlier, and it's, uh, it was definitely cold, so we'll probably hear a few little squeaks and everything as everything starts to warm up. These tires look awesome, I'll tell you that, but they're not the best riding tires. These are the Maxxis Trepidor, which is a competition mud tire. So starting with the interior, I definitely have the heated seats on and I have the heat blowing because it's needed. But the cabin is comfortable, it is warm. As you can expect with any Helderberg build, it has our custom air conditioning and heating system where we combine the two. That's not normal on the Land Rover Defender. Normally in the Land Rover Defender, you have an air conditioning unit that runs on the underside of the dash that is only air conditioning. And then your heat is in the dash where it's controlled with switches on either side of the instrument cluster. Ours is completely different and by combining the heat and the air conditioning what we're able to do is make a defrost system that is efficient so it will really defrost your windshield much easier than if you were just running a straight heat system. Bruno does have a heated windshield since it is going out west where it will be cold, Utah to be exact. So we're climbing a hill on these 35s this truck has been performance tuned. So interesting fact, it's a 300 TDI, which is a 2.5 liter turbo diesel. And that's the same motor that was used in a number of Land Rover Discoveries and also Range Rovers. The Range Rover and the Land Rover motor was tuned for the highway for trips being a vacation vehicle and the Land Rover Defender is what we would call detuned. It was detuned to be able to be more of a farm truck, more torque, so you can really climb those hills. So to be able to make a Land Rover Defender suitable for the highway and for vacations and for long trips, all you have to do is tune it differently, the motor, and also change the drivetrain. So the Land Rover Defender's gearing normally originally was different in the sense that it was geared with lower gears to be able to pull those hills and pull your tractor out of the mud. So we'll pull up here to the red light and I'll go over some details about the interior. So the interior in Bruno has been highly modified as you can expect with any Helderberg. It's got extensive sound deadening 
So what we do is uh, we do a number of layers of butyl rubber and a layer of foam inside on the bulkhead, on the flooring, and the doors, on the roof, everything. So it's a lot quieter inside. Like we're sitting here right now, it's at an idle. You can barely hear the engine running, but I do really like the sound of the engine, that, that diesel motor. It's uh, not only is it highly fuel efficient where you can expect to get 28 to 32 miles per gallon, but it's just a long running motor. So you have, and what I mean by that is it's, uh, it has a very, very, a very long life. I've seen many of these with 500, 600,000 miles on them that have not had any major work done to them. And I've seen many of them that are well into a million miles plus. And uh, it's just the design of the motor. It's a bulletproof motor. This is a truck that you drive to enjoy. You can definitely drive it on the highway. You can take trips, you can enjoy it. But this is where you slow down and actually enjoy life. Do some stops, take some pictures and just make some memories. So let's continue on the drive and I'll continue to tell you about the interior. Twenty miles an hour. Thirty five. Fifty. And we are on a country road. It's very twisty. And again, this truck has been lifted. These tires really are not designed to be doing 80 miles an hour. They look cool, but if you want to do 80 miles an hour, I would highly recommend doing something like a Toyo Open Country that still looks rugged or a BF Goodrich KM3 that's a mud terrain tire. These tires are very bouncy and they were designed to be aired down to about five pounds to give you a, mo a maximum contact patch for off-roading. They weren't designed for snow, but I've definitely used them in the snow a lot. But the compound in snow, when it gets that cold, will start to crack and uh, look dry-rotted because they weren't really designed for snow. All right, so the interior. Interior in this one is definitely luxury. I mentioned all the sound deadening, but starting with the headliner. The headliner is an Italian Alcantara suede. Uh, it's very, very supple, very smooth. I don't think supple's the word, but very smooth that it's, it's an Alcantara suede. It's very nice. It definitely br makes it much more luxury inside. The interior is a two-tone leather. It's chocolate and black with a diamond stitch pattern, and the stitching is done in caramel. So that's the contrast on the chocolate and then also on the black. So it does, it looks really nice in the two-tone. These seats are a little more of a sport seat. This is called an MK2 seat. They are heated and they do have lumbar support. The thing is with the lumbar support, which is really cool, is actually it looks like a blood pressure cuff and that's how you adjust your lumbar and then you push the button and it lets the air out of the lumbar. They're adjustable as far as front and rear and then you can slide back and forth on that. But they are a comfortable seat for an uh, average size person. If you are uh, built like a football player, it might not be that comfortable of seat because the side bolsters come out. These seats do hug you. The headrest on these seats is adjustable. You can raise them up and down. And then in the rear, we have a row of three seats. What normally in a Heldeberg Defender, what you'll see is I'll do two seats and then a center console for more storage. But this one has three because we built this for a gentleman that said he wants to be the coolest grandfather and he has a lot of grandchildren, so seating was very important. In the very rear, we have bucket seats, which are center facing bucket with seat belts, and that seating is for four. So total seating capacity, four in the rear, three in the second row, and two in the front on that. It does have the mahogany Heldeberg steering wheel with the stainless steel spokes. And of course the steering system has been uh, reworked Heldeberg style. So you can see that I can drive this truck with two fingers. It's very easy to drive. Shifting is a manual five-speed transmission. But again, Heldeberg style, 
that's been reworked too. So we work on the clutch, so I'm able to depress the clutch with very little effort. And shifting will shift down just to show you. It's very easy. I can do it with three fingers. And part of the driving experience is definitely the manual transmission. So I have people say, well, I'm going to drive it as a daily driver, stop and go traffic. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to come to a stop. So let's pretend I'm in stop and go traffic. I put it in second gear. I'm going to just crawl to a stop where I'm just barely moving right now. Don't even know if you can see how slow I'm moving. I do have the clutch depressed. So here's my stop and go traffic. Again, the clutch been, has been reworked. So it doesn't take much pressure to hold the clutch in. I could do this all day and my leg would not feel tired. So I can put it in first and I'm just going to let the clutch out really slow, but I'm going to hold the brake just a little bit. And you can see I'm off the clutch and you can see how it's just barely crawling. So I'm just hitting the brake just like traffic is stopping. And then I let off the brake. Again, the clutch is out and that's what it does. So you can kind of think about this design as what you would call a slipper clutch. It's not a slipper clutch, but a slipper clutch means that you don't always have to change gears on it. So, but again, changing the gears is what, you know, a lot of people find enjoyable, but it also, with this transmission being a five-speed manual transmission, it allows you to really utilize that performance tune, all the work that we do to a Helderberg. So you definitely have more horsepower and more torque. And I'm asked a lot of times about, well, how much is the horsepower? Well, we've basically doubled the horsepower, but horsepower doesn't win the race, it's the torque. And the torque is what you feel when you're pulling away from a stoplight. But again, you see how slow I'm crawling, and now I can just go ahead and accelerate and pull away. It's nice. Back to the interior. It is heated seats, and I'll tell you, this is very nice. I am a heated seat fiend, even in the summer. Granted, I do live in the northeastern United States where it never really gets very warm, but it does have heated seats. The glass has all been changed, and what we do with the Helderberg is we go to a thicker glass. Standard Land Rover glass is a four millimeter glass. This is a five millimeter. It gives you more sound deadening, but it also keeps the cabin cooler or warmer depending on what you need. Everything is wrapped in leather inside. You'll see that the door panels, the dash, the lower dash, everything is 100% leather. There is no vinyl in this vehicle and uh, the smell of leather is very strong. In fact, we just got back from a convention where there was thousands of people, I started to say hundred, but hundreds, but there was definitely thousands of people that seen this Defender and I couldn't even begin to estimate how many pictures and videos were taken, but probably one of the biggest comments that people would go, hey, come here, smell the leather. This leather smell will stay in this truck for many years to come. It just doesn't seem to go away, which is great. As you look around this interior, you'll see a lot of attention to detail. And what I mean by that is all the billet aluminum. So what we do is we custom mill the billet aluminum, meaning that you'll see the, the around the gauges, the gauges have billet aluminum. That's not plastic. It's actually billet aluminum. The vents for the, the heater and the air conditioning, billet aluminum, the shift knob, the door handles, and then on the exterior, the door handles are even billet aluminum, and so are the hinges, the window brackets, and everything. So it's those extra little touches that start to add up to make it a, a very impressive build. And it's something that you just don't find on other builds. But I think it's because the way that I approach a Land Rover Defender is I don't focus on how many can we build. I focus on them one at a time. And quite honestly, this is my Rolls Royce. This is my Bentley. This is my supercar, luxury car, whatever you want to call it. I mean, yes, it's a farm truck originally. That's what it was designed to be. But I definitely like all the the feeling of the leather, the smell of the leather, the Italian Alcantara suede, the billet aluminum, 
just everything that goes with it. It's a very visceral feel to drive one of these. And if you want something that basically drives itself and you're not connected to, that you get into it and you're just numb and you're in a hurry to go somewhere, then a Helderberg's not for you. This is for the individual that has reached a certain level of success and you have your sports cars in the garage, you have your other vehicles in the garage that you get in, you're numb and you drive. This is, you get in, you drive, and you're able to just enjoy life. That's what it's really all about. But what I really love about it too is I can drive down these country roads, these back roads, and then I see a dirt trail call it a deer trail, a goat trail, whatever it might be, a logging trail, and I can just turn on that trail and go. I don't have to worry about the road condition or getting stuck. And I have a lot of people say, oh, well, there's no way I'm gonna drive such an expensive vehicle on a trail. And I'm like, why not? It's what it was designed for. It's very capable to do that. But it just, it allows me to transport myself. I don't know if that's a good analogy, but I'm, I'm able to just kind of relax and enjoy life. No radio on, nothing. Phone is turned off. All right, so I'm off my soapbox now. Continue about the inside. Uh, this one has not had Apple CarPlay installed yet, but it will. So it will have a seven inch touchscreen, high fidelity audio system. So we'll have tweeters in the dash, mid-range in the lower dash, an additional set of mid-range in the seat boxes, and then coaxial speakers in the rear, and then it will have a backup camera. So the audio system will sound really good, and it will have hands-free calling. So you can definitely do a hands-free call. It does have a lot of sound deadening, but I'm never going to tell you this is going to be as quiet as an Escalade, but it is drastically much more quiet than a standard Land Rover Defender or other builds that you may or may not see. So let's talk about the outside now, the exterior. This one does have a full roll cage and the roll cage does go all the way to the frame. So you'll see where there's bolts on the fenders, but there's holes that were cut through those fenders, those wings, the body, and then there's a bar that continues all the way to the frame where it's attached to the frame at six different points. It does have a roof rack, and uh, it definitely gives it a rugged feel. So Bruno has been lifted. It's approximately a three inch lift, and when we do a lift, we don't do it just with tires and putting some blocks in between a frame and the body. We do it properly. It's a suspension lift. So whenever you do a suspension lift, there's a number of things that have to take place that's really important. You'll see a lot of times that someone will do a lift and they do it with bigger tires and then put some blocks in between the frame and the body. We, we don't do that. So with a lift, to do it properly, the first thing that you need to do is radius arms. So you have four radius arms, two in the rear and two in the in the front. And the radius arms, what they do is they turn the axles back to the, its proper geometry. Because whenever you lift, you're turning that entire axle upwards because then the, the prop shafts and the drive shafts are reaching the transfer case and the transmission. So if you don't do the proper radius arms, then what's happening is you're wearing all those parts out. You're making everything harder on the vehicle. And that's not the way to do it, to be honest. So new radius arms go in, polyurethane bushings go in, coil springs is what's creating the lift. So the coil springs are a progressive coil spring, meaning that it's they change, they're progressive. So like if you're on a bumpy road, then the spring rate is proper for the bumpy road. If you're on a smooth road, then that's where the spring rate is proper for that. So it doesn't create that truck-like ride. It's a much more comfortable ride. So now that with the lift, you have to do a custom prop shaft. And 
In other words, it has to be longer to be able to reach because you've twisted everything back and the distance is greater. You need to re-gear, so your front and rear differentials need to be re-geared so your speedometer is working properly. And you're also able to use that additional power. So it's a proper lift. There's a number of things that go into that proper lift but uh, that's just kind of a small example on that. So again, three inches of lift on this one. The color, which people are always uh, really taken back by, they're like, wow, this color is beautiful. This is pretty close to the color that Enzo, the D130, my personal truck is. This has a little more of a metallic flake in it, so it has that wow factor in the sun and then in the shade it's a little bit of a darker green it almost takes on a military look but in the sun it's a it's a bronzy golden green which is a beautiful color it does have the helderberg uh, headlight surrounds which are billet aluminum and then i could basically our signature grill and you'll notice on the front that the grill sticks out a little farther and that's to create more dimension. It does have an aluminum bumper that we call that the race bumper, which is pretty neat. I'm turning around right now. Turning radius with the bigger tires, um, I won't say it suffers, but it's not as great as it would if I had the standard tires. But no problem turning around. I could actually turn around in this little country road in a three-point turn. One of the things you'll notice is the gauges of a Helderberg. I don't uh, change the dash out to what's called a Puma dash. The Puma dash came much later. And personally, I don't care for the Puma dash. It's a very big bulky dash. The dash comes out much closer to you. It almost makes me feel claustrophobic. And it has the LED gauges, which are very dated. And the Helderberg, I mean, we will get to the Puma dash much later. Uh, but we believe in a numbers matching, period correct vehicle. But what we do is the performance upgrades, performance upgrades to the braking, the engine, the steering, the clutch, the sound, everything. So it's very drivable. And uh, on the road, on the highway, vacation trips, whatever. But to the gauges is our gauges are custom made and they're LED backlit. So they have that classic look, but you can see them at night. So nice touch. The, it's, just, I've, it's just a touch that I appreciate. But of course, with the billet aluminum trim around them, it gives it a little bit of modern feel, but uh, keeps that classic look. So a lot of times I'm asked, uh, is that a brand new Defender and this one being a 1997? No, it's just a complete restoration, ground up, frame off, everything has been restored. Engine's been redone, transmission is new, transfer case is new, differentials are new, wiring is new, glass, seals, you name it, everything is new, but it is a numbers matching, meaning that the engine block and the chassis and the frame are the original but the frame has been completely gone through and powder coated. So it's, uh, this build will last for a lifetime. So with the lift and these tires, I get people ask me all the time, should I do the Maxxis Trepidor tires? And the answer quite simply is, do you like them? And if you do, then yeah, definitely. But no, they are noisier, but they definitely look cool. Technically, these are a 35 inch tire that are and the wheels are a bead locker style that's 12 and a half inches wide. That's a spoke wheel. The wheels are custom made. And uh, so are the arches or the, the flares, whatever you'd like to call them. Flares are made out of fiberglass uh, and are custom made. And the tires poke out past it a little bit. So this is a look that it seems the vast majority of people really love, the rugged look. And quite honestly, it's a look that I really like. I think Defenders are beautiful any way that they come. But this is a style that really 
talks to me and that I appreciate, and that's why you see a lot of builds by Helderberg that look like this. Uh, Defender is all aluminum, so fenders, the hood, everything, the body's all aluminum. And when you're looking at pictures of a Defender, you definitely want to pinch and zoom and everything else and make sure that you're seeing those spot welds that run along the, the panels. So on the rear tub, the rear quarter, you'll see these little dimples and those are spot welds. That's how it was made from the factory originally where they weld it from the, from the outside in. They put it on there and it spot welds is what's happening. Or then you'll see the dimples that face another direction where they're welding it from the inside out. And then you'll also see the rivets, and you'll see rivets that are unpainted on a Heldeberg, and reason being, that's the way it was originally done at Land Rover, that some of the rivets were unpainted and some were painted. So we're keeping to that classic look. We're also showing you, too, that a Heldeberg is completely disassembled. All of the body panels, all of the rivets are all drilled out, and everything is disassembled, and then it's painted the sides, the back, everything is painted off of the truck and then we reassemble the truck piece by piece. So if you've seen the pictures on social media and such with uh, on Helderberg, you'll notice that when we paint, we're not taping, you know, putting some tape over stuff and uh, putting paper over the windows or anything. Uh, that's not the way we do the build. The build is everything is disassembled and everything is painted and then everything is reassembled. So we're building a Defender the same way it was built originally at Land Rover in Britain. Hand built piece by piece. So Bruno being a 300 TDI Again, D110, it's a five-door D110. You can also get a three-door D110, but this five-door D110 does have a 300 TDI 2.5 liter turbo diesel, which is a fuel-injected turbo diesel. It does not have a computer. And Land Rover years ago got a bad reputation because of their electronics. It wasn't engine failure or transmission failure, it was the electronics, but this Land Rover Defender, the Helderberg Defenders that you'll see, don't have a computer in it. You also don't need to use DEF, which is called, it's a diesel fluid that's on modern diesels. It's a mechanical diesel motor, no computer. This one's been performance tuned, which means it's a custom built injection pump, has a VNT turbo, it has a custom made uh, a cylinder head, the cylinder head is where the majority of the moving parts are at, and by us custom milling this cylinder head, we've increased the water jet so they're bigger, and uh, exhaust ports are bigger. So it actually gives you more low range and mid range torque, and it's also a quieter running cylinder head than the standard Land Rover cylinder head. Exhaust system is custom made. It's the Helderberg Signature exhaust system, which is a three inch downpipe. So if you were on the exterior and I was to drive by, it definitely has a deeper sound. It almost sounds like a train. Uh, it's not that it's loud, but it just has a, a, bull, a full kind of a bass sound to it. And then of course we've re-geared the transmission and re-geared the front and rear differentials to be able to handle that additional power and get it up to speed with these 35 inch mud terrain competition mud terrain tires which are not dot legal these are a bias ply tire versus a radial tire uh, it's they're cool but they're noisy and they're not really designed for the highway but i could cruise easily at 65 miles an hour on this tire and it's not that the motor couldn't do more it's just it's limited by the tire because you would definitely 
wear these tires quickly because it's a very soft rubber compound to be in the mud and on the rocks. So now I'm just going to be quiet and we're going to enjoy the drive and you can see how easy it is to steer and brake. It does have four wheel disc brakes all the way around and the rotors are bigger and the calipers are bigger so you have really good stopping power. Here's something that you could probably really appreciate when it comes to a Helderberg build. And it's all handmade. Everything is hand built. So when you're looking at the pictures and you're you're really looking at a Helderberg, I think it's important to understand that the the interior is hand stitched. I'm not saying we don't use sewing machines, we definitely use sewing machines, but it's it's hand done. Even the steering wheel is hand done. The wood, the rivets, all of the aluminum spokes, the, the centerpiece, all the fine lines around the steering wheel, the Helderberg logo that's engraved in, this is all done by hand on a CNC machine. The vents, the billet aluminum, everything in here is hand done. The sound deadening that's applied, the Alcantara suede that's from Italy, the leather that's from Scotland that's made in a tannery. So, everything being hand done hand assembled this truck has been completely disassembled everything has been removed where it's just thousands and thousands of parts and then everything is reassembled by hand it takes an average of about 3,000 hours to build a Helderberg and I think you can really tell the attention to detail and it's it's, it's fun and I really appreciate that when people come and look at a Helderberg and the things that they say that that impresses them. So if you're walking around on the exterior the door handles that you grab are unlike any other door handle that you will see on a Defender. Even the spray nozzle that sprays the you know the water on the windshield is handmade and hand assembled. And you'll see that when you use a spray nozzle on a, a, a Land Rover Defender or a lot of other Defenders that are built, it's two little streams, it doesn't really do much, and this is a fan spray. So it's those little things, the little attention to detail that we're focused on to make this an heirloom investment. A Helderberg is definitely not the least expensive and nor will it ever be because the amount of man hours and the amount of consideration that goes into everything, even the spray nozzle, the door handles, the adjustment of the screws, how the seat is actually, the seat frame is built, the adjustment of the pedals, the throw of the gear shift, the size of the center console, everything has been taken into consideration. And if you were to have a Defender, another Defender sitting beside a Helderberg and a Helderberg, you could instantly see the difference in every little aspect of a Helderberg, from the paint to the sound and to the just the feel and the smell. That's what makes it a Helderberg. It's completely different and that's what justifies the price. But the biggest thing is just knowing that you're going to have a vehicle that, again, is an investment that you can pass down to your children, and it's only going to continue to go up in value. They're not for everybody, but when you do own one, it's quite special.